This is section 4.3, How Derivatives Affect the Shape of a Graph. And our first content objective is to use the graphs of either f, f prime, or f double prime to read y coordinates, increasing and decreasing behavior, concavity, and or locations of extrema and inflection points. By the time we're done, I'd like you to be able to explain why including the domain points where f prime equals zero or undefined in both the increasing and decreasing intervals makes sense. So we have some vocabulary. Some of this is going to feel like it's old because you've been talking about increasing and decreasing for a couple of years now. If we read this increasing definition, the formal one, it says a function increases on the closed interval from a to b if for any two x coordinates within that interval, the y coordinate assigned to the left coordinate will be smaller than the y coordinate assigned to the right coordinate. So if we think graphically about this, let's say I have a parabola and this is my a and this up here is my b. We can say that we increase on that interval from a to b because no matter where I pick two x coordinates in that interval, the y coordinate on the left will be smaller than the y coordinate on the right. Notice that this is true even if I pick my first endpoint to be a and my second endpoint to be b. This a's output will be smaller than b's output. So we say that we are increasing on that entire closed interval. The same thing happens here. If the function decreases, we can say it goes from b to c in this scenario because every x-coordinate to the left of an x-coordinate on the right in this interval will generate y-coordinates that are larger on the left than they are on the right. And notice that happens at the endpoints. So some people get a little confused because we want to say that this particular function will increase from the closed interval from a to b and then it will decrease on the closed interval from b to c. And they get confused because that b is included in both. It's both part of the increasing interval and the decreasing interval. And the reason it can be in both is that we only define increasing and decreasing along intervals. So we have to have two points. If I choose a point to the left of b, that y coordinate is going to be smaller. So therefore, that is in an increasing interval. And if I choose an x coordinate to the right of b, that output will be smaller. So again, we will have a decreasing interval going from b to c. Next, we have a new vocabulary called monotonic. So a function is considered to be monotonic if it is either always increasing or always decreasing. If it doesn't shift back and forth, then it's monotonic. Next we have what is called an increasing and decreasing test and this is where we connect what we knew about increasing and decreasing in the past to the derivatives. Next we have what is called the increasing and decreasing test and that is where we connect what we knew about increasing and decreasing in the past to this whole concept of derivative. Turns out that if the slope is positive then you can say f is increasing. So here back at this picture we see that the slope is positive here and that occurred when the function was increasing. Same thing on the decreasing side as long as f prime is less than zero then f prime will be decreasing. So again the tricky point is going to be thinking about what happens when f prime is zero or when f prime is undefined. Remember that those need to be included in the interval notation because we're going to be getting up to those max values or we'll be traveling down to the min values and those will be included in the intervals of increasing and decreasing. Next we have a point of inflection. A point is considered to be a point of inflection if three conditions are met. So anytime that you have to justify the existence of a point of inflection, you're going to need to illustrate that you know the criteria. So the three criteria are that the first derivative has to exist. So you need to check that a in f prime and make sure that it works because if it doesn't then it's not a candidate for a point of inflection. The next piece is that the second derivative needs to be zero or undefined. The final piece is that that second derivative must change sign. If you don't change sign at that point where f double prime was zero or undefined then you do not get a point of inflection. 
Next we have concavity. We've talked a little bit about concavity this year and you also talked about it last year. But now we're going to formalize it and say that concavity is a measure of how fast the rate of change is changing. So think about acceleration or the fact that this is a derivative of the derivative. So we're looking at the second derivative and we determine concavity by looking at the graph and its associated tangent lines. So if the graph of f lies above all of its tangents, then it's called concave up, whereas if the graph of f lies below all of its tangent lines, then it will be concave down. So let's just look at this picture right here. We can see that all the tangent lines will be underneath this curve, so the function would be concave up. Similarly here, we can see that tangent lines will be above the curve, and so the curve is underneath its tangent lines, so the curve would be concave down in this region. So another thing that we can think of when we're talking about concavity is we can say that f is differentiable on an open interval and the graph of f will be concave up if f prime is increasing. So that means if the slope is getting larger or steeper in the positive direction or more shallow in the negative direction. Or in other words, if f double prime is positive, then we'll say the original function is concave upward. The other side of that is if f double prime is negative or if f prime is decreasing, then the original curve is concave downward. Now unlike the increasing and decreasing intervals where we close the edges or close the endpoints, on this one concavity will always be determined on open intervals with the exception of endpoints. So that means if we are on a closed interval and we're looking at concavity within that interval, we can include the endpoints if f double prime is positive there or if f prime, double prime is negative, but we don't ever include when f double prime is zero or undefined. So to complete this skill, it's important to know at all times the function whose graph you're looking at and whether you are going to be looking at the y-coordinate, the slope, or the concavity, and how the graphs you have can give you information about the other two functions whose graphs you don't have. So you've got to think about what function we're looking at. So here's an example where we have three functions drawn together. We have the original, we have the first derivative, and we have the second derivative. So with the original function, we're going to be looking at three different things. With the original function, we will look to see whether it's above the x-axis or below. So we're looking at the y-coordinates to determine when f is positive or negative or zero. We will also look at the slope of this graph because we can talk about f prime being positive or zero or negative or zero or positive. And notice that the slopes on f correspond to y coordinates on f prime. So if we look at them all together, here I had positive slopes flattening out. So we see that on the red f prime curve we're above the x-axis and then we hit zero. When we have negative slope on the original, the derivative has a y coordinate that is negative. And when we have a positive slope on the original, we get positive y coordinates on the first derivative. So we can look at when this is above or below the x-axis to get outputs on the function. We can get the slope of this to determine whether f prime will be positive or negative. And we can also look at whether this is smiling or frowning. So we can talk about when we are frowning, that means my second derivative will be below the x-axis. And then when we're smiling, the second derivative will be above the x-axis. And when we change from a frown to a smile, that location is where we will have an inflection point or a zero on the second derivative. So again, we can see here's where we're changing from the frown to the smile and notice that the second derivative or the blue graph was crossing the x-axis. So in our examples following this we're going to be looking at pictures of f or f prime or f double prime and we've got to make sure that we answer the question based on the graph that we are looking at. So let's summarize our observations in a chart. Turns out that when we are looking at a graph of f, there are three things that we can consider. We can consider whether we are smiling or frowning. We can look at whether we have a positive slope or a negative slope, or 
we can look at whether we're above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So we can look at positive y-coordinates, zeros, negative y-coordinates. When we look at that on our original picture, that tells us nothing about the slope and nothing about the concavity. So this we will only look at when we're asking questions about what the zeros of the function are or when the function is positive or when the function is negative. By contrast, when we look at the slope information on the original curve, it will tell us when we get positive y-coordinates or negative y-coordinates or zeros on the derivative graph. They also tell us possible locations for maxes or mins. So we can look at the original and see the high or low values that will correspond to x-intercepts on the derivative graph. When we look at the concavity, or the smiling or frowning, that's when we get information about two other curves. So when the graph of f is concave up, that means f prime will be increasing and will have a positive slope. And it means the graph of f double prime will be above the x-axis and have positive y-coordinates. When we look at when the original curve is concave down, we're looking at when f prime is decreasing or has a negative slope. And when the second derivative curve is negative or below the x-axis, Axis. Lastly, when we look at when we change from smiles to frowns on the original graph, that means we're going to be corresponding with possible maxes or mins or higher low values on f prime and x intercepts or zeros on f double prime. So let's look at example two where we're using the graph of f to estimate the intervals where f, f prime, and f double prime are positive, zero, and negative. So since we're looking at the original graph of f, we can tell that f will be positive and zero and negative by looking at the y coordinates on this picture. So we can see that we will be positive from negative infinity to negative six and then we'll be positive again from negative two to two and then we'll be positive again from six to infinity. Again, we're looking at when the graph of f or its outputs were above the x-axis. We can see that f is zero when x is negative six, negative two, two, and six. And we can see that f is negative when f is underneath the x-axis, which is from negative six to negative two, and then again from two to six. If we want to look at f prime now, that means we're looking at the slope of this original graph. So we can see that f prime will be positive when the original graph has positive slope. So that's going to be from negative four until zero. And then we will also be positive from four until infinity. When we look for zeros on f prime, those correspond to horizontal tangents on the original. So that happens when x is negative four and zero and four. Lastly, if we want f prime to be negative, that means we need the slope of this picture to be negative. So that will occur from negative infinity until negative four, and then again from zero to four. If we want f double prime now to be positive, that means we need to be looking at when this curve is smiling. We can see that that happens from negative infinity until probably negative two, and then it smiles again from two to positive infinity. The negative f double prime is when this is frowning, so probably from negative two to two. And we can see that the inflection points, or when f double prime is zero, will occur when we're changing from a smile to a frown. With example three now, we're looking at the graph of f prime rather than the graph of f. So on f prime, we can only read when it's above the x-axis, when it's below the x-axis, and whether it has positive or negative slope. We will not ever be looking at the smiling and frowning on f prime. If I want to know when f is increasing, that is going to occur when f prime is above the x-axis. Now notice on the increasing and decreasing, in this scenario we are going to include the endpoints. So we can say that f is increasing from negative three until negative one, and then again from one to three. 
we can say that its f will be decreasing when f prime is below the x-axis. So that will go from negative infinity to negative 3, and then again from negative 1 to 1, and then again from 3 to infinity. We can then look at the extrema and see that we have both maxes and mins. And notice I'm just going to give the location because I don't know what the output on the function will be. So I'm just giving the locations of maxes and mins. When f prime changes from negative to positive or from beneath the x-axis to above, we get a min. When f, f prime changes from positive to negative, we get a max. Here again we're changing from negative to positive, so that is a min location. And here we change from positive to negative, so that is a max location. We can consider when the original curve is concave up by looking at when the derivative is increasing. So f will be concave up when this is positive slope it'll be concave down when this has negative slope. So positive slope occurs from negative infinity until negative 2, and then we're positive again from 0 until 2. Notice that these are soft brackets as opposed to the hard brackets we had on increasing and decreasing. Concave down will be when this curve has negative slope, so that's from negative 2 to 0, and then again from 2 to infinity and inflection points occur when we change from positive slope to negative slope or negative slope to positive slope. In other words, they occur when we have horizontal tangents on f prime. So that's going to be at x equals negative 2, 0, and 2. Next, we can look at when f double prime is positive, 0, and negative. Notice that this corresponds to the same places where we were concave up and concave down on the original. So we'll be positive and 0 and negative. If we look at example 4, again we are interested in reading information off the second derivative now. So off the second de derivative, our only things that we can look at is whether we're above or below the x-axis because signs of f double prime will tell us when f prime is increasing and when f is concave up or concave down. So in this case, we're going to write down that f is concave up when f double prime is above the x-axis. So that's from negative infinity to negative 3, and then again from negative 1 to 1, and then again from 3 to infinity. Notice that these will correspond to when f prime is increasing. So we get the same intervals here. Inflection points will occur when the second derivative's picture crosses the x-axis. So that happens at negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 3. These will also correspond to extrema on f prime. And again, we'll have maxes and min locations. The maxes on f prime will occur when f double prime changes from positive to negative. So that will be at negative 3 and then again at 1. The mins on f prime will occur when f double prime changes from negative to positive. So that will occur at negative 1 and again at 3. Lastly, we can look at concavity when we are concave down. Since I have a graph of f double prime, I'm going to be looking at the y coordinates, and when they are less than 0, that means that f will be concave down and that f prime will be decreasing or will have a negative slope. So that happens from negative 3 to negative 1, and then again from 1 to 3, and decreasing will be from negative 3 to negative 1, and then again from 1 to 3. And I neglected to use hard brackets up here when I should have, because remember increasing and decreasings include the zeros. So those should be hard brackets. I'd like you to try your notes web exam problems now. There are three of them. Look to see if you can read the graphs of f or f prime or f double prime to get the information and answer the questions.